good morning, and a happy Sabbath. It's the first Sabbath in November. Thanksgiving's almost upon us. Wow. And uh, yes, it's persimmon season. Yes. I hope you're enjoying those. Season's almost over, but they are sure delicious. I actually looked up and tried to see if those were in the... Uh, if the persimmon tree was in the Bible, I don't see any references to persimmons in the Bible. So let me know if you find one. And uh, this week, uh, we honor Veterans Day. Hey, ho, ho, throwbacks. Yeah, there's Michelle and I years and years and years ago. I used to be younger, I guess. She's still so pretty. And there's my son David and I on the aircraft carrier constellation during the tiger cruise uh, pastor eddie and his son were also on that and, uh, saying goodbye on another deployment that was the last deployment so it's good to have family it's good to be a family and here in the family of god and getting to know god we're finishing up day four today and starting next week you look down there at day five if you have your books you can look the uh the uh, topics here, Christian growth from baby Christian to maturing. How does that happen? And the great divide, those who know God and those who don't know God. Wow. So look ahead at that. Today, there we are finishing up day four. And so let's jump right into day four of the end there on page 110. And um, in talking with some people, this came, this is kind of an interesting concept. Uh, reasons why obedience comes by faith alone. Faith alone. How does obedience come by faith alone? Nothing we can do. Except, let's go ahead and pray, and then we'll jump right into that, okay? Dear Lord, we want to obey you. And we want to love you and we want to know you. Help us just come into our lives to work that miracle because it requires a miracle from you. Thank you for loving us. I ask that you bless so many people. We've got so much going on. And uh, I thank you that you have promised you will always be with us and that you will always love us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so Pastor Venden says he would like you to look at these eight reasons why obedience comes by faith alone. And the first, he says the Bible says so. The just shall live by faith there in Romans 1, 17. And uh, Obedience in the second one, obedience can come by faith alone because of the nature of mankind. Remember, he, he says there in day one, he's talking about our nature. There's nothing in our nature that makes us want to obey God or able to obey God. And uh, kind of an interesting thing there, he's talking about when uh, Jesus was talking to Nicodemus in John 3 about being born again, and I'm less... We are born again. We cannot see the kingdom of heaven. We cannot see the kingdom of heaven unless we're born again. Mm. So he moves on to the uh, day two study about the nature of surrender. And you remember in day two, he said we can't even surrender to Jesus without his help. We can't even surrender ourselves to him without his help. So if we can't even surrender without faith, without the help of Jesus, then he's saying, how can then we be able to obey if we can't even surrender? So, so obedience comes by faith alone because there are Four. This Cynthia, I like this statement. He says the fact that God wants us to be controlled by Him, and 
in our day and age, that sentence probably instantly sets you up on edge. Nobody wants to be controlled by anybody. And so he goes on to explain here. Either God is in control or the devil is in control. Um, and, if, and that's of our life. It's who do we give control up to? Um, would you think that many people think they have control of their own life? They're opting for that third option. They're saying, well, God's not in control. Satan's not in control. And, but I'm in control. And um, is, that really a, is that really a third option? Or is that really just kind of rehashing what Satan had told Eve to get her to doubt God? We're not surrendered and giving control of our life to God. We're trying to take it. We're trying to be like God, like the devil. Like it. Anyway, but I do like how he concludes right there. God's control is the control of love. God is love, so his control is of love. And I think uh, if we surrender that control to him, we then can become much more loving in, in, the, uh, in a Christ-like way. Very much. We will, and we will become obedient, he says. Pastor Benjamin says, if we surrender to his loving control, we will become obedient. Okay, the nature of repentance, here he goes. Number five, obedience can come by faith alone because of the nature of repentance. And he says repentance is not our own work. We do not repent. We do not do the work of repentance on our own, but it's a gift. Here in Acts 5.31, let's look at that. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior that he might give repentance and forgiveness of sin. It's a gift, a, the gift of repentance and forgiveness. And then we can obey. Number seven, obedience comes by faith alone because of Jesus' mighty example. Hmm. He did works and lived his his life through the power above him rather than from the power within. That's interesting. Yes, God, and that's the whole thesis of this book. To know God is to see Jesus, the example he led. And so his example of how he surrendered his control to God to be obedient that's our example right there. Lastly, this one is, this goes into an interesting little deal right here. And I like this because of where it ends up. Okay. Obedience comes by faith alone because of the fact that we are offered rest in the Christian life. These couple pages, I hope you can go over them because very interesting, um, this idea of rest, obedience and rest. And he's talking about Hebrews 4 there. And um, uh, talking about how we, there's, he's talking about, let's, um, he's talking about this rest we can get through obedience to God. And uh, then he goes on. Look at that last paragraph on page 112. He goes on to talk about Revelation 14. Um, in the last of the three angels' messages, they have no rest day or night who worship the beast in his image and who receive the mark of his name. So 
contrast that to what Jesus said, come unto me and I will give you rest. I know that's someone's favorite verse right there. Jesus says, come unto me and I will give you rest. Have you ever felt really wearied out in this life? Just wearied? Um, so we're contrasting then people that have no rest day or night with the people that Jesus said, come unto me and I will give you rest. Then he goes on to talk about something interesting. He heard that in, still in chapter 14 of Revelation, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. And he's saying, have you ever heard of People say they dying to self, dying to Christ. So perhaps blessed are the dead which die in the Lord, that they may rest from their labors. And this is the daily thing we can do if we die to our own self, if we die to our own will and surrender that to Jesus, we can rest in him. We can rest in him because he knows what's going to happen. He knows what's best, and intellectually, I think we all agree on that. But to actually live it, and live in that confidence that no matter what happens today, God is in control. And I don't have to worry about it. That's not a promise that the day is going to be carefree and without problems taking a full rate go right. Uh, quite the opposite. No, I think most of us would agree there's lots of things happening, lots of problems in this world, too many problems in this world. But as Jesus said, he's overcome the world. And this isn't our home. So no matter how many problems are here, we can still in confidence rest in God and be at peace. Um, and I think that's a genuine peace that other people will recognize and be hungry for. Um, <clears throat> there's a new song out that talks about um, if we, if churches had a sign that says, come as you are, you know, you're welcome just as you are. If we actually believed that, the churches would be full every week. But So that's something to think about. Um, anyway. Now, rest. So he goes back to Hebrews 4 here. And you can look over Hebrews 4 and this. He's talking about three kinds of rest here. This is what he deduces from that. I'll let you study that and see if you come to the same conclusions but <clears throat> there is rest from working for acceptance and pardon from god those are gifts from god so we don't have to work for them we can rest in him rest from working to overcome the enemy and we cannot do that on our own we cannot overcome the enemy on our own ever. So if we're working to do that, that is a, a futile, futile effort and exhausting. So we can rest from that. Keep our faith in God. Rest from working to get to heaven or to enter the promised land. So we can rest from all of that. So there's his little invitation at the very bottom. He invites you to put all of this, uh, to enter into God's rest today, every day, and cease from your own works in trying to obey and overcome and be victorious. Hmm. Comes from that day by day by day relationship, not a superficial relationship, but a deep, abiding, eternal. He concludes this day with the how to obey. And he says, I will try to put all this in the simplest possible terms. 
if you enter into a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, then continue that relationship with him from now until he comes again, he will do the rest. That's the commitment you make. Enter into that relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Continue that daily until he comes back and he will do the rest. He ends with this, <clears throat> talking about genuine obedience. It can be understood and experienced only by a committed Christian. It is not simply another self-help or behavior changing or modification. Obedience by faith alone. And that's we kind of briefly went over OB8. Eight, um, eight reasons or evidences that he thinks that every obedience comes by faith alone. And here he concludes, obedience by faith alone comes only from the heart and can only come to the one who is in a day-by-day -day communication with Jesus. Day by day. I wanted to wait for this part until the end of our our uh, <clears throat> study because I certainly, um, uh, man, everyone, all these devotionals about music and everything, and we're looking at different stories and lyrics and stories behind the songs. And here's one that you've heard by Corey Asbury, Reckless Love. It says, when I was your foe, still your love fought for me. And uh, love the love his lyrics. There's no shadow. You won't light up mountain. You won't climb up. Coming after me. It's the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Have you ever thought of God's love as reckless? You know, it's chasing you down. It will do anything. God will do anything he can to come get you. It's amazing. Because God did love the world. And there's a new song based on that. God so loved by we the kingdom. And I like there verse 3. It says, bring all your failures. Bring all your addictions. Come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Come to the foot of the cross. And Jesus is waiting there with open arms. Can you picture that in your mind? The problems in your life, the addictions in your life, the sin, everything, all the problems you have. And perhaps Satan's saying, because of those, you're too far gone. Because of those, you will not get to heaven. He's worried, maybe. But here's the picture of Jesus at the foot of the cross, and you're bringing your life to him, this crumpled, tattered mess, and you lay it down, and he's got these open arms, and he just grabs you, and he says, welcome home. I love you. And you see him. It's an amazing thing, our Savior. We're closing up. I'm going to go to a verse that popped up this morning from 2 Corinthians 5. And it is, God made him who had no sin to be sin, to be my sin, to be your sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Too amazing, too amazing. And I thank you for your time sharing with me today. There we go. And I hope uh, again that you are studying with somebody. Go deeper into these lessons. And uh, look over next week. Or this, we're starting day, day five next week. And that whole thing, the great divide. Those who know God and those who don't know God. That great divide. God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed week. And uh, take care of yourselves. Enjoy the last of the fall weather. And uh, looking forward to uh, the holidays, Thanksgiving.
to spend time reflecting and thanking God for all he's done for us. Let's pray. Father, thank you for these few moments we can come apart, look into your word. And Lord, I ask that you send your spirit so that we can surrender. I ask that you do that miracle that we can surrender our lives, surrender our control, everything to you, to trust you completely, to love you better, and so that we can obey out of a grateful and thankful and loving heart. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a good week. We'll see you later. Okay, okay.